Hey everybody, it is Sunday, it is Christmas week, and welcome back to our online um, lessons. So, um, today would have been, sadly, our uh, Christmas party, uh, December 20th, that was the date it was going to be, uh, obviously that's not going to happen. We're going to try and maybe do something, at least maybe kind of the gift exchange, that's always a fun thing, uh, maybe in January when we can get back together. Um, it's kind of a group outing uh, or event um, when we get back together. So um, because of that, we were already taking off Wednesday. So we're off Wednesday. Christmas is this week. We'll be back on Sunday. We're taking off the next Wednesday uh, for the holidays. Uh, and then the next Sunday, two weeks from now, we'll be back in here for those who would like to come. Uh, we will be in here for uh, Sunday school is opening back up. And then... For now, the plan is to come back on Wednesday nights uh, that week as well. So wait until January, um, and we'll let you know if things change. We'll plan on being here Sunday, uh, first Sunday in January, and the first Wednesday uh, in January. So keep you updated on that. We're still uh, hoping to maybe do some events, uh, outdoor events, the tree burning. Uh, we will definitely have the bonfire uh, the Sunday night before Martin Luther King day in January. It's the third Sunday, I believe. And, uh, still going to try to do a couple outdoor events. Um, when we get everybody back together, we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, we do have one birthday this week. Uh, Anna is a Christmas baby. So happy birthday, Anna, uh, this week celebrating with the Jesus. All right. Um, we finished up the Advent series last week and we're starting this week. That was just kind of a one lesson starting and finishing this week. Uh, just a Christmas lesson. So um, we're looking at the kind of the famous passage. You've probably heard it before out of Luke, uh, which is the birth of Jesus. That, that is the heading of that um, section in Luke, uh, Luke chapter two. If you want to turn there, we'll get there in a bit. Um, but the, uh, the thing we're starting with today is that uh, things are not always the way they seem, right? Um, Think about maybe what you were expecting. I, I have a story. I, I don't know how old. No, I don't know. I was probably like maybe some of you sixth graders age, somewhere around there. And I forget what it was, but I knew I was pretty sure I was getting something. You know, you kind of hinted about it and you got hints back from your parents. I was kind of expecting a gift and I forget what it was. And I don't know what it would have been that I would open something this, you know, about this size. But I, uh, Christmas Eve, we always had a tradition. We could open up one pack, one present on Christmas Eve. And so I grabbed one that I, I again, I can't remember what it was, but I thought that was going to be the thing I was looking forward to. And I opened it up and it's from my grandmother and it was like underwear and socks. And <laughs> I was kind of like, oh, man. All right. Well, I guess I'm waiting until tomorrow. So, uh, so it wasn't quite what I expected. And that's what we see when we look at the Christmas story. We've all heard this, um, at least in some version, some form. If you've uh, grown up in church, you've heard it many times from uh, the children's um, Sunday school um, to youth, to in church, to Christmas cantatas and all kinds of everything. Christmas specials on television. You've seen and heard this story before. You probably know it, right? Um, so you've heard of, obviously, we know Mary. We know Joseph, Joseph, we know baby Jesus, but there are other characters too, right? Um, and if you look at all of them, none of them got what they were expecting, right? They all opened up their package and they had underwear and socks, right? So imagine, first of all, Mary and Joseph, we kind of know their story. Mary was a teenager. Joseph probably was as well. Uh, they were far away from home. They had to travel away from home as as we'll get into the story here in a minute. Mary is pregnant. It's not Joseph's baby, um, but here they are, okay? Not quite what they were expecting from their teenage years, right? Uh, and then think about the shepherds. They're out alone in the middle of nowhere in these fields with their sheep, just hanging out doing their shepherding, right? And all of a sudden these angels appear. Don't think they were quite planning on that happening. They surely did not expect that to happen. Not what they were expecting from that night, right? And then uh, we think about it, you know, what if, what if Jesus was born today? How would that happen? Where would that take place? Um, you know, we know it was in a manger. There was no room in the inn. They were kind of put out in the back, kind of a hole in the wall here with a little manger they put together uh, in a small town that was under Roman rule. 
where would that take place today? You know, think of it like a country that's not particularly uh, have all the freedoms that maybe we have here in our country, uh, maybe in a very small rural town in the middle of nowhere. Where where would that be if you think about where that would take place? We're in small group. We'll talk a little bit, maybe a little bit in small groups about that. But uh, it would probably be where you least expect it, right? And the parents, who would the parents be? Probably be the last people that you would think God would choose to be the mom and dad of the Savior of the world, right? Um, so it's kind of interesting to think about how would that look today. And again, it wasn't what anybody expected. Um, and before we read, a couple other things to kind of look at. Uh, we know that uh, if you listen to the, or if you just watch the church service, uh, one of the songs talked about 400 years. Um, the Emmanuel Higher Manger Ground uh, mentions that phrase. When you turn the page from Old Testament, Malachi, the very end of the Old Testament, to the New Testament, Matthew, turn one page, 400 years have passed, right? Um, we don't hear much about uh, what happened during that time. Uh, the Greeks were in control during some of the time. We know that Paul wrote some of his letters, uh, including his letter to the Romans, in Greek. Their culture influenced uh, the people of that time, the Jewish people of that time. And the story of the Greeks continues on. Um, they actually controlled what would have been um, the Jewish people. Uh, they forced pagan religions on the Jews. Uh, and it kind of led to this rebellion, which also happened during this time period. Half the people kind of followed these leaders, even though they're forcing the pagan religion on them. And it led to this uh, Maccabean revolt. Okay, again, it's not in the Bible. Through this revolt, the Jews, though, gained independence, but it also split these people up, which we'll talk about more in a second. And they were uh, free until about 63 BC. That's when the Romans take control. Now, we hear all about the Romans in the New Testament, right? You can't hardly uh, go through the New Testament without hearing about it. Paul was imprisoned by them. Um, you know, even in the verse that we're going to look at in Luke 2, uh, Julius Caesar's adopted son is Octavian. He is known as Augustus, as in Caesar Augustus, as in Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree. That was Julius Caesar's adopted son who was now the Caesar who was now in charge Caesar uh, Augustus uh, and it was a peaceful and economic uh, good positive economic time during Augustus's reign um, but they also allowed uh, local rulers which we'll talk about in a second a other thing we we don't really hear much about we never hear in the Old Testament about Pharisees and Sadducees right these people that are always trying to trip up Jesus and always kind of uh, against him. They're kind of the antagonists in the, in the Gospels, right? Um, well, the early, remember we talked about that uh, Maccabean revolt? Well, the early supporters of those rulers who were forcing the pagan religions on them turned against them, and those, those people became the Pharisees, kind of like two sides in this revolt, the Pharisees, and those who remained supportive of these rulers were the Sadducees, okay? So they were enemies, and they kind of hated each other, but they were always fighting against Jesus, right? They kind of united in this common enemy in Jesus. So uh, that also happens, kind of builds up to this point uh, in those 400 years. And also we all know about Herod. Uh, the Romans, although they ruled, they allowed local or kind of native people to rule little areas, kind of be the governors. Herod was a very good, clever politician uh, and he was an effective king. He's also very cruel. He was also very suspicious. He had his wives, several wives killed, several children killed. And that's why he sent out the order to have Jesus or have all these babies killed because he heard that this uh, baby was Messiah. And all he, his only job to do for the Romans was just keep the peace, keep things. They don't want this uprising. They don't want this Messiah. You know, we can't have this rising up in your area. Take care of this. That was his main job. Um, and which is why his Jesus and the family had to flee because they ordered the killing of all the babies. Herod, did, Herod is best known for building things. He built the temple, which we see numerous sites and numerous accounts in the New Testament. Uh, and also when he died, uh, the Romans divided this, his area into four regions, one of those being called Galilee, which we see where Jesus kind of grew up and spent most of his time and doing most of his ministry. So all of these people, the Greeks, the Romans, Pharisees, Sadducees, Herod, none of them expected this, 
right? Nobody really got what they expected, not just Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds, you can kind of uh, see central to the story, but really nobody did uh, see this coming. So I'm going to read quickly verse uh, verses 1 through 20, Luke 2, and it is titled, The Birth of Jesus Christ. You've probably heard these uh, exactly. This is typically the story people would read, uh, talking about the birth of Jesus. So Luke 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, just mentioned him, that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration uh, when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went from Galilee, uh, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which was called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, uh, who was with child. And while they were there, Time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to the firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Again, you've probably heard um, any of these verses before. The angels and the shepherds, the next section. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and said, The glory of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that, I, that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in, a, in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel and a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them, into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went without haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondered them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen and had been told them. So, um, so again, we uh, touched on a lot of the things just mentioned in that 400 years. Where did all these things come from? How did all this happen? And again, bottom line is nobody expected this. Who is this baby? It's, is it just another baby born to teenagers in this small little town in this little hole in the wall inn that didn't have room? Obviously, there's nothing normal about this baby. And that is the whole point of this time of year and why we celebrate Christmas because of uh, us worshiping uh, this child. He is the Savior. If you listen to the songs, again, if you watch our service, all the songs today, because Pastor Rick's sermon is similar, uh, are on the same, along the same lines um, of the Christmas story. All the songs were about Emmanuel, the come, come Emmanuel, Emmanuel, uh, Hallowed Savior, uh, Manger Ground, um, God with us. Okay, so Emmanuel means God with us, I just said. Uh, and that's what he was. He was a savior. He was God in a bod, right? He was the only person in this story who seemed to know exactly what they were doing. Nobody else knew what they were doing. Nobody else knew, knew what to expect. God did. God is putting himself into human form on purpose, knowing that he will die. Sending his only son, uh, this baby has come to save us. And that is the absolute best gift that any of us could ever receive right we get excited sometimes about the gifts that really don't matter i don't even see i don't even remember that story i told you where i got underwear and socks instead of i don't even remember what it was i don't remember what i was looking forward to something that i probably really enjoyed for a day or two or a week or something like that and i've obviously forgotten about it so we rip through all these presents and open them up and it's great and it's fun uh, to give gifts to other people and enjoy those things that we receive but after a while, we kind of, like I said, we get bored with it, all right? But there's nothing that really compares to this gift that we receive. And this year, uh, hopefully we can take some time to receive this gift. Again, we've kind of talked about in some of our Zoom calls and in some of these messages that you know, this year is very different, but that might be a good thing because we're not as busy going to Christmas parties. We probably won't go to as many family events. Uh, we can't go out. I mean, it stinks, but like maybe we can be a little more focused on this gift that we get this that we celebrate this time of year the gift is jesus born for you born for me born to all of us uh jesus the son of god come down into our messy 
imperfect world to save us, each and every one. Notice that the angels, the gift is for all. It's given to all. It's not just to you shepherds. It's not just a gift for you. It's a gift for everybody. If you go back and read those verses, it's to all. They mention that. Okay, so it's for you. It's for me. It's for everybody. Um, we just hope and pray that uh, whatever you expect this Christmas season, uh, and this, maybe this year especially, uh, that maybe you get something you didn't expect. Maybe you get this heart full of love that God has given for you. Uh, and there is no package that can wrap that up. There's nothing um, you can do to earn that gift. We've talked about that before. It's, it's given to you. It's given to all, again, as his verses say. Uh, so let's remember that at this time of year. That is uh, why we celebrate um, this time of year is the birth of Jesus who came to save all of us. So with that, we will finish. We'll be on Zoom. Uh, we're going to, we've got more people here at church, so we are going to step it back a little bit more than normal. We won't start. Uh, I'll text it to you. Uh, we're going to push it back a half an hour uh, to give the people here time to get home. So uh, you'll get a text with the links for our Zoom call. Uh, and we will see you. Have a great Christmas, and we hope to see you next week or maybe the week after that. And uh, again, keep posted on any events that we do uh, in the near future. Have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas.